nine. Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club, Friends of Financial Freedom. Got a great show for you. Got the top 10 characteristics to look for in biotech stocks. Can't wait to uh, show you that. Totally awesome stuff. And Cassava Sciences in PS Palsy. Can't remember what type of palsy. We'll, we'll take a look at, looks like they, they're uh, going after a n another new indication. We've looked at Parkinson's cancer, uh, mTOR-related epilepsy, uh, po possibly other types of dementia. Uh, uh, there's, we looked at everything else, the misfolded filament A, or the many, more than 90 other biological processes around the body. Misfolded filament A may be involved in so Cassava Sciences uh, has so many other possible applications, but we'll look at them in PS palsy. Can't remember the type of palsy that is. And the fact that, uh, once again, we'll take a look at the fact that in their own 10K, it says they could be on the track to 2023 approval. We'll take a look at that. Uh, let's dive in. Let's dive in. The market. Kelsey, great to see you. I've got you on my list for the biotech boot camp on, uh, on this, this weekend. Uh, you're getting a preview of chapter two. You're getting three of the top 10 uh, characteristics uh, for this weekend. Great to see you, Kelsey. And the, the market, market S&P up 0.75%, uh, NASDAQ up 0.21%. So not so bad. We got a little bit of a recovery today. Netlist is approaching $4, up more than 8%. Uh, TNA, the small cap three uh, time daily, is up 6%. Where is Cassava? Cassava is down half a percent. Let's dive into the stories. Let's start with the top 10. I called it the top 10 characteristics to look for in biotechs. This is a preview. We're doing the biotech boot camp. The reason I started late today is uh, I'm working on the, the biotech boot camp coming this weekend, 10 to 4. Saturday and Sunday, sign up for that in the comments, uh, not that you're already signed up. Uh, uh, so anyway, this is, I, I lied, this, I said top 10, this is you were getting three of the top 10, we're getting a preview, three of the top 10 reasons uh, for, for the top 10 characteristics uh, for uh, the top, to look for in the best biotechs. Here we go, uh, number 10, as we're counting down to number one, except we're only getting three. Number 10 is new research in difficult indications. So the idea is because of the risks inherent in innovation, biotechs often validate their candidates in indications with well-understood underlying mechanisms. This can make for crowded, well-understood fields, as McKinsey notes. So that the idea is they don't want to take a big risk. So they're, they're, we're going to go after things that are already well-understood, but that there, it turns out if you do that, everybody's doing that, so it's crowded. Uh, so the, the well, understood field, well understood fields get crowded. As McKinsey notes, with more than 30 products in development to treat approximately 20,000 children around the world who are diagnosed with Duchenne muscular dystrophy after every year, companies struggle to recruit patients for trials. Companies can benefit from enhancing their understanding of disease biology and innovate to design unique products that can target under-addressed diseases. So they're saying there's an opportunity in a better in putting your research into understanding diseases better, the ones that are not as well understood, understanding them better, and then and, and targeting those that are not as crowded. So uh, I thought that was so that was that was a good. And then there's also we'll, we'll give another one away. So we're going to see three of the ten here. Another one is orphans. So they're saying going after. Uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Well, why why are there so many companies going after that? There's only twenty thousand kids because the orphan indications. When we look into those, there's so many good things about orphan indications. Okay, so it's number one is look for companies that are doing their own research, sort of pioneering research in in not as well understood fields and doing new things there rather than uh, going after things that are all, have been well understood for a while and are crowded. It's number one or number ten, if you will. Next. Demonstrated differentiation. So the idea is it's not enough to be better. You have to demonstrate that to the market. So look for management teams to set up trials to be as directly comparable to competitors as possible to demonstrate value, as well as speak to competitor data 
and the need to best the data clearly, not just have better technology. Let me say that again. So look for management teams to set up trials to be as directly comparable to competitors as possible to demonstrate value. So you wanna just not say, look in an absolute sense, this is really good, but you wanna be able to say, we used the same, if you can, if it's applicable, you wanna say, we used the same scale as the competitor product and look, we did better on that same scale. So as much as you can, sometimes it just doesn't make sense, but as much as you can, you wanna set them up to be as directly comparable as possible. And then you want the management teams to speak about that as much, you know, a little bit at least, to say they, they understand the fact that they need to show in the data their differentiation, not just have better theoretical technology. Okay, that was number nine. Number eight, sort of like number number nine, demonstrated uh, da better data, but not just that. Then once you have, once you have, so basically once you're sort of through the trials and now, now you're talking about the market turning to the market, you got to prove it to the market. You got to prove it to the FDA to get onto the market, but then you got to prove it to the market to, to win in the market. So that you got to demonstrate to the market as well. So demonstrated value to the healthcare system. Everyone knows that the costs of the U.S. healthcare system are out of control. Biotechs need, not, need to not just show that the technology is better, but that the system, but that the system will realize savings and that the stakeholders like doctors, hospitals, payers, and patients are willing to adopt quickly. SC Pharmaceuticals did terrific research, for example. So we've looked at this when we looked at SC Pharmaceuticals. They have their uh, patients are going into the hospital with heart failure. They get they take diuretics at home. But once you uh, get past a certain point, they stop working and you have to give those same diuretics in uh, as a, as a in, in much more fluid, much more amounts. So they're, they're giving them as an infusion and you have to go to the hospital uh, and, and it costs a lot of money. So the idea is SC Pharmaceuticals uh, gives it to you subcutaneous in a device you take at home. And so anyway, okay, so they got it, they got it, uh, they, they looked like it was going to get approved, and then it did get approved, but now is it going to make it in the market or not? So they, they did a lot of great research. They went to heart failure specialists, cardiologists, nurse practitioners, primary care physicians, emergency rooms, hospitals, and they said, do you intend to prescribe this? And they got terrific numbers, 93, 96, 94% said, yes, we intend to prescribe this. And then, and they said, will you prescribe it? Not just in general, but within six months. And the numbers were almost as good, 89, 88, 86. So they had a really good proposition. So you want to you wanna look for not just better technology, but a, a proposition uh, specifically with the, the stakeholders of, of why, they'll, why, why, they, why they will adopt it. So there, again, there's the doctors. In this case, doctors are held accountable if the, if the patients are... Uh, if the patients are, are readmitted with this heart failure uh, to, to get these drugs intravenously, it's very costly to the system and the system knows about it. And they ding the hospitals in their Medicare funds, or yeah, their Medicare funds, and it's the doctors that are, are sort of held responsible. They're the ones that are said to have, 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 are, have missed it. So anyway, so the, the doctors and the hospitals in that case, plus the patients want to be at home and uh, doctors... Doctors, yeah, and, and, and the payers, oh, and it saves money. So the payers, all four of, the, uh, of, their, of their stakeholders are taken care of, and they were able to show that ahead of time. So they look like they're in good shape. So we got seven more characteristics to look for. That, that is part of chapter two of the biotech boot camp. Take the boot camp in the description, sign up for that. And that takes us to, Robert had a great comment about... Uh, Cassava's 10K recently came out. Now we've seen this language before, but the 10K is audited, signed. It just is, it has more weight. You're not supposed to ever lie, of course, but uh, you could, if you said something in a, in a conference, you might've said, you know what, that was, that was sort of off the top of my head. I didn't really mean that. If you say something in the 10K, you really mean it. It's poured over by the lawyers and things like that. It's audited. So anyway, it's, it's meaningful if it makes it through into the 10K. So Robert says, recently, someone informed us about the FDA initiative titled Real World Evidence. If you look up FDA Real World Evidence and read that, then read the press release for the 200-person open label results, 
you notice that cassava is comparing semifilam results in the total population of the 200 person open label to placebo results from the real world evidence. Next, read FDA guidance on enrichment strategies, which is essentially the CMS trail. Remember, we always talk about that enrichment. The FDA encourages you to do enrichment, which means identify a population that the drug works for. So it's okay if you have, uh, in, in cassava's case, it's okay if your drug doesn't necessarily work for everyone. Let's then enrich it and see if it does work for a subset. In their case, they started with 120 or 206, 216 people in their one-year study with mild or mid Alzheimer's, and 125 after a year were considered by their doctors to be responders and went in to the second uh, leg, the CMS portion. So that's enrichment. They identified a portion, a population that it worked for, and the FDA encourages you to do that. And in fact, the FDA either designed this trial or signed off on it because as we're about to see, they met with Robert Temple, the architect of breakthrough therapy designation. Then if you look at the 10K that was filed recently around the quarterly report regarding the end of phase two meeting with the FDA and Dr. Temple, it explicitly states the FDA agreed the completed phase two program together with the ongoing well-defined phase three clinical program or, su uh, or sufficient, are, she said, I think he's saying, are sufficient to show evidence of clinical efficacy the above information supports approval of semifilam in 2023. Okay, so really, so great work, uh, Robert. Join the Investors Club newsletter. You get the Discord. There's great stuff, Robert. Terrific comment. And then Robert goes on. Why does Cassava Sciences' most recent slide deck explicitly call out a science journal publication regarding filament A and supranuclear palsy? And Remy mentioned a possible new pipeline treatment. And so, uh, so we, we just heard about an independent, uh, an independent third party should be uh, presenting evidence of somifilam's ev efficacy in uh, another condition. We had speculated Parkinson's because of the Freedom of in Information Act release had shown the design. They had designed a Parkinson's study. So it could be Parkinson's. We know they have work with mTOR epilepsy with done with Princeton. We know they have intellectual property around cancer. Here is progressive supranuclear palsy. So what is that? It is a rare neurological disorder. So we're talking about probably an orphan indication here that affects your body movements, walking and balance and eye movement. It results from damage to nerve cells in areas of the brain that control thinking and body movement. Different than Parkinson's, another movement disorder, although they share some symptoms. PSP typically begins in late middle age and worsens over time with severe disability occurring within three to five years of onset. The disease can lead to serious complications such as pneumonia, choking, head injury, and fractures. Currently, there is no effective treatment, but uh, okay, okay, so I'll just leave it at that. All right, with that, my investing friends, let's go to the phones. Sorry for the late start. I uh, working on the, the biotech bootcamp. It's going great, but it's uh, it's so much stuff. My schedule is all out of control. Great to see you, Pale. Great to see you, Kelsey. Thank you so much for the kudos. Pale Joe, do you still think we are back in a real bull, or have recent events changed your mind on this? Well, I think there's blood in the streets, and this is the time to buy. Uh, things have been obliterated, so you know it's not. It's uh, in, I didn't remember I was, I was saying after I was saying, I thought we'd have a bull run at the beginning of January and then you should sell after two weeks and all of, and, and, and that was a great, great call. And then all of January was great. I said to sell early, but then all, then all of February is the give back. So it's not that I, I, that I said the rest of the year would be choppy. So it's not that I think it's going to be the beginning of a bull, but I do think biotech is in, is in blood in the streets. It's back to where it was eight years ago. So I do think biotech's a good, a good buy. If you looked into your crystal ball and only saw there were many large bank failures and bank runs, would that make you bullish or bearish? Hard to say. I still don't know what I feel about the injection of liquidity, if that's bullish or bearish. Morning, Joe. Not a user of Discord, just downloaded How Do I Join? MT, uh, send me an, I'll tell you what, yeah, if you send me an email, if you reply to one of the emails I sent you, I will send you the newest Discord link and then you can join. Pale signature was the S&P. Look how quickly it went down. One, one small nice thing is that 
uh, Bungie, I know that one, Agricultural Commodities is taking signature. Is that right in the S&P? Tim, hey, Joe, have you had a chance to check out Arthuris? No, I've been so busy with the biotech boot camp, buddy. I have not. You, you mentioned that stroke. I do want to check it out, but I'm not. Uh, Pale, I think it's good at least one nonsense. Yippers. Bob, Pale, are you here to find gems that will go up in any market? Uh, or to thank you, Bob. It is, it is time we say that. Pale, enough of the, of the broken record. Uh, is it, are you here to find gems that will go up in any market or to constantly state the sky is falling? By the way, even during the Great Depression, there were stocks that went up. Thank you, Bob. 99 watching and only 33 likes. Marie, thank you very much. Uh, please hit like. Yo, yeah, the algorithm likes like. And you are going to like, like, and like. I'll tell you that. Bruce. Hey, Joe. Great post from Robert. FDA's initiative, real world evidence, support approval of semifilam in 2023. Yeah. It's, uh, let's take a look, let's take a quick peek at it again. If you look at the 10K that was filed recently around the quarterly report regarding the end of phase two meeting with the FDA and Dr. Temple, it explicitly states that the FDA has agreed that the completed phase two program, together with an ongoing and well-defined phase three clinical program, are, are sufficient to show evidence of clinical efficacy. So the, the company has publicly really downplayed that. They, they said uh, they, they've just downplayed any, everything except for we want, we're just going, taking this all the way through to the end and let the data speak for itself. But they're, that's really, really uh, explicit for a second time, and it's in the 10K now. It's, that's, that's a really great, uh, great thing to point out, Robert. And, uh, and Bruce, I just totally agree. Great post FDA's initiative, real world evidence supports approval in 2023. Indeed. <laughs> so you think this is the crash of 2020 uh, of 19, 2028, 1928 rather. Okay. Sava to a thousand keeping the faith about Sava. Thank you for all the hard work, Joe. My pleasure. Ditto what Bob says. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Joyce. Pale, you, you've had some good contributions, but please, new, new comments only, please. Uh, Mark, hi, Joe. Always great to catch your show. Do you see the phase two completed with end of CMS placebo portion or the end of the six month extension back on the drug? It's not, yeah, it's not the end. So thanks, Mark. Uh, thank you for the shout out, Mark. Yeah, that's, this is not the end, but it is the end, it is the most important portion. So this is, uh, if you look on clinicaltrials.gov, this is actually one study. It's a two year long study. And now they've tacked on an extension after that. The first year was the, was the 216 people we got in a single arm. And then this, then it goes into six months of the placebo. Half the people come off the drug and half the people stay on. That's what we're waiting for. That should be over June 15th. We should get data in like July or August. And so we're waiting on that. And But they, that won't be the end though. So there's six more months for people after that. And then they then once you get that, you get at least one year of open label extension, I think two. And there's people that are already on that. There's like Dr. E's father, Hillary's father. They're already, uh, they're already on that. They're already through, all the way through the two years and on the extension. Hi, Joe. Happy Monday. JC, good to see you, my friend. The crash was in 29. You called, Pale called the crash. He's been around a while. Pale called the crash of 28, and it was in 1929. Good job. SC Pharma earnings call on the 22nd. What do you expect to hear? I don't, ex I expect to hear, uh, I, I still don't know. I, I don't expect to hear projections. We'd love to hear them say, we, you know, we think we're going to get 20 million in sales this year or whatever, uh, but I don't think we're going to get that. I think we'll get. Uh, I don't. I don't think we're. I don't know if they're going to share numbers with us at all. But I do think that. I do think we'll just get a report about how it's going, uh, anecdotally, and I think that will be good. I think they will give us a good report about how it's going, that the market's receiving it well. And but I don't. I, I'm not. I would, we would love it. We'd love for them to say, "Oh yeah, we already got uh, five million in sales, and we think we're going to get you know 100 million this year." They're not going to say that. I don't think. 
But I just think it'll be generally things are going well with no disruptions in the supply chain, no surprises as far as uh, all of a sudden the insurers don't want it or something like that. Just no surprises is good news, basically. The rollout's going well. 186 regional U.S. banks, with some of them have similar problems as Silicon Valley Bank and will force the Fed to cut rates soon. For me, bullish for biotech, tech, and crypto. That, if they cut rates, I sure agree with you. However, it looks like we're getting yet another hike coming up here pretty soon. I forget when they meet, but it's coming up. And uh, it looks like the, the market's betting on a quarter point hike. I'm with you that at some point, there's, the, the, the rates are going to turn. We always talk about the risk-free rate and why it's so important. But uh, I don't know how soon that's going to be, though. So, but, but, but you don't need to time the bottom. Like we've been saying, you don't need to get the exact bottom. This is blood in the streets, eight-year lows or eight-year levels. Hello, Joe. Hi, Johnny English. Good to see you. Happy first day of spring. Uh, somebody else said spring break. I didn't realize. Oh my God, it's the, gosh, it's the equinox. Happy equinox. Oh, great. All right. I love equ I love the spring. Long days. I've been noticing the days have been getting longer. Thank you, my friend. Happy spring to you. Pale primate. It is sick that people think the Fed rigging rates to be low is somehow a good thing. If you can game it well, it's a good thing for you. Afzal, after reading the clinical data of open label phase two of study of mild patients, Saba is a screaming, freaking buy. I couldn't agree more. It's ridiculous. This is the biggest unmet medical need in the world. <laughs> and it's, there's never been any data anywhere near this. Either analysts are dumb. We know analysts are dumb. We, we looked at it empirically last week from the data from McKinsey. We know the analysts are dumb. Uh, or they lack courage. Well, that too. The data is shouting itself. For your information, says Arch, together with an ongoing and well-defined phase three is in the uh, March 1st uh, 10K also. Yeah, frankly, I'm not sure why they had two 10Ks. No, I haven't heard anybody bring that up yet. Somebody said, oh, the 10K came out last week, and I, and I saw that it did. But I'm thinking to myself... <laughs> 10K came out two weeks ago. So, all right, it came out again. Okay, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, maybe they, had a, they maybe they had an update or they had an edit or something. I'm not sure. Pale, my screen says the market is still up today. Are you looking at a different screen? <laughs> JC, those who invested after the 1929 crash during the Depression did pretty good long term. So worrying about what's happening now is not really worth it. Just invest for the future. And I will add, we looked at the history going back to the 1800s, holding through everything. And even if you leveraged it, it the, we, looked at, we were looking at those leveraged funds and we saw that even if you held since 1880, it would have been worth it to just buy and hold and be in a leveraged fund. So in, that includes being in a leveraged fund for the, the biggest crash, 1929 crash. That includes being in a leveraged fund for that. So time, you don't have to time the market. Remember, time in the market is better than timing the market, right? So I'm with you, JC. They cut rates in the 70s too because they thought they'd beaten inflation. Guess what happened then? By the way, speaking of all this stuff, uh, in the investors, uh, I do the big dividends uh, portfolio as well. I started a 13th portfolio. I have 12 portfolios in there. After the biotech boot camp, we're going to start the dividends stream every day as well. I started a 13th portfolio in there, hyperinflation. Pipelines, utilities, resources, real estate, gold. Uh, if, if there was crypto dividends, but there's not. Uh, but so dividends, dividends for hyperinflation, because that could be very real. Uh Staples, perhaps. Love SC Pharmaceuticals says, Johnny English, don't see any downside. Also a great buyout opportunity. I think so too. Loading up also with Saba. I think so too. I think they'll have proof of, con I think I think it's uh, once they don't need to get bought out, I think they'll get bought. Once they've proven that the market wants it and the sales numbers are looking good and they're on their way, they won't, they won't need Big Pharma anymore and then they'll get bought out. <laughs> That's what I think too. Marie, do you comment on Yahoo Saba? No, some Joe does. Uh, no, I don't. Yahoo is owned by, what's not Apollo. 
Apollo's a short hedge fund. So people put people type up long comments on there and then they delete them because the shorts are in control of the message board. No. The Investors Club Discord is the only place, Marie. Don't like investing just because there's a rational and zuber. I got to say, Pale, why don't you short the market? Just if you're really that convinced. Can you please three name your three top dividend stocks right now? Tim, I will give you Farmer Mac because it's it got uh, sold off a little bit in the banks. This compounder kept making new high after new high. This one is going in the hyperinflation uh, portfolio because it is a play on ranches and farms, American ranches and farms. So this has a sustainable competitive advantage because they are backed by the United States Department of Agriculture. So that's the federal government. They print their own money. So Farmer Mac is a supremely good credit risk. So when they go to borrow money from a commercial bank or by issuing bonds, they get really, really good rates, better than competitors. And they probably will always get, will get better rates than competitors. They take that money, they loan it to another institution that loans it to American farmers and ranchers for farms and ranches. So it's, it's an indirect, it's, it's sort of a play on farms and ranches. It has a sustainable competitive advantage. It, that, that is definitely one of my favorite uh, dividend stocks right now. Uh, let's see. I'll give you that one. So sign up for the Big Dividends newsletter. You get all 13 portfolios. And there's still only, and if you sign up right now, you still only get four portfolios. Still 142 stocks. But I've, I've added to that considerably with the, with now 13 portfolios. That will start in a couple weeks. But sign up, you can get the four portfolios right now. Uh, Schwab downgraded Saba from hold to sell. There should be no comfort in your forecast aligning with the analysts because they're morons. So if the analysts don't like Saba, good. Uh, that's That's good. Pale, why don't you get your own show? But I don't think you'll have anyone watching. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. Arch, clarification, last year's 2022 10K. Okay. I mean, technically, this year's is 2022's. It's the annual report from 2022, which comes out in 2023, whichever one you're... FDA wants to approve drugs for Alzheimer's. No adverse events and statistical slow. Good to see you, Sean. FDA wants to approve drugs for Alzheimer's. We saw this with Billy Dunn's comment about how they want to do everything within their regulatory framework to approve drugs for, with, for fatal neurological diseases uh, with no drugs to treat them. Like uh, this, they, they were speaking for Amelix and ALS, but of course Alzheimer's, fatal, with no neuro, fatal neurological disease with no good drugs. No adverse events. This drug is safe. Even the shorts don't say it's it's not safe. Nobody says it's anything but safe. There's just no evidence at all. It's safe. Safe and well tolerated. No adverse events and statistical slow. I decline on average makes likely approval. Yeah, so even even though uh, in in the one year, 216 people with, with all the non-responders there were, on average, people did not absolutely improve, but they sure did uh, better than, than how they likely would have gotten worse. Declined. The real world evidence idea came out of the 2016 CARES Act. Interesting. Thank you, Sean. Always good comments from you. I never short anything. There's no limited downside to just get out. Not really true. On one hand, that's absolutely true. That's why I don't short either. Great thinking. I agree with you. But uh, and, and also, if you do, do your stuff in an IRA, you can't really short anyway. But you can't short. But you can buy a, a short ETF. So you can buy ETFs that are short the market. You limit your downside, and you can do it in an IRA. Farmer Mac does sound like a good long-term play. We'll likely buy some next year. They just got, they, they kept compounding and kept making new all-time high after new all-time high after new all-time high, and then the banking crisis just hit. All the banking things got hit. This is a great time to buy. What is the average yield in the big dividends portfolio? There's 13 portfolios. There's four uh, right now. That there was, there's the high yield. The high yield was up 8%, 9%. There's sleep well at night. I can't remember. I'll say it was 4%. There's the uh, dividend growth. Uh, say 3%. 
I'll, I'll say the sleep well net was 5% and growth was 3%. And then uh, the global tax shelter, well, uh, I, can't, I can't remember. We'll call it 4%. I can't remember. But uh, and then I've added nine more portfolios. I'm really excited about it. Uh, so those those 13 portfolios. So that'd be that'd be really really good. It'd be a lot of fun. It'd be a good compliment to this show. Two different two different uh, complimentary types. Tons would watch for sure. If lots of people are watching, that means people are way too hype. Look at all the stock and crypto videos in 2021. Well, then that is good news because it's been. I'm really glad everybody's here. I love everybody being here. Thank you. But even if I look around the other investing sites, like uh, the Best of Us Investors, he has over a hundred thousand subscribers, but his videos are only getting like six thousand views or something, and that's really good. It's better than me, a lot better than me. But it's also uh, like a real, real small. Like people are. It's it just. It's just emblematic of the market. It's been a bear market for a while. It, this is uh, pale. I, I really got to say, if you're if you're calling this uh, over enthusiasm, what would you call it? Uh, I forget what you call it, but over enthusiasm, over enthusiastic. Can you post the yield in the discord? Sure. If you're, if you're a subscriber, uh, you have access to the, to the portfolios. So Kathy Woods was, uh, irrational exuberance. Kathy Woods was everywhere after arc got super high. Best of us was pushing people in the market at all time highs. Yeah, but that that was two years ago. I mean, nobody's watching anymore. He has over a hundred thousand subscribers, and less than ten percent watch. So that was he. The, every, the point is the, the the bull market got all. The, the, everybody came in the bull market. They're all gone. That was all the uh, the the cert, the stimulus checks, whatever. That stuff's all gone. All right, great to see you guys. Sign up for the newsletter. Sign up for the boot camp. Doing it this weekend. Can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's so much great information, and it's risk-free. If you say this is anything except for the best biotech possible, camp possible, boot camp possible, you get your money back because it's not possible. It's literally not possible. It could be a better one. You will say this is too much. You will say it's a lot of fun, and you did a great job of getting this much information to be uh, presentable in two days. But it's, it's, it's comprehensive and wonderful. Sign up. I don't think you need the real washout. I don't think the real washout has happened yet. It's quality of subs, not quantity. I agree. This is deep stuff. I would have to dumb it down and and do... Uh, I would, yeah, it, this, this we're doing real research here. This is this show is really part of the community in, in the Discord and on all the research we, we do in, uh, together. And, and getting to the bottom of things together as a community here on the show as well. It's, it's not really, it's not, the, the, in, 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 this, in, in streaming, you, you go for either everybody or uh, a, a real narrow segment. This is the real narrow segment. We're not going for everybody. I couldn't agree more. Be sure to hit like, Bob. You're going to like, like, and like. Thank you, my friend. Pale, you were given two ears and one mouth about using them at the same ratio. <laughs> Any date on the class action lawsuit? Uh, maybe so, but I can't remember. I'll have to, I'll have to check the Discord and, and bring it in. All right, let's wrap it up. Great to see you guys. We'll do it again tomorrow. Sign up for the boot camp, and I'll see you in the Discord. If you sign up for the if you sign up for the boot camp and you're not in the Discord, I'll uh, I'll send you the uh, the Discord link. Uh, sign up for that, and I will see you in the Discord. Come join us for Biotech Boot Camp. Thank you so much, Textile J Textile. Thanks so much. Uh, for for all your help uh, promoting my stuff. All right, I will uh, see you guys. See you guys in the Discord. Have a great night. See you in the Discord.